Hey, Bill of the North here. Today's video is a comparison between the Bagnold Sun Compass and the Abram Sun Compass. Which one is better? Well, the answer on that is that it depends. Both of them have advantages and disadvantages. This is a working model of the Bagnold Sun Compass. It is far from a precision device, but it works pretty well for practice purposes, and I've been tooling around with this for a couple of years now, and I've got a pretty good feel for how it works. This is an actual Abram Sun Compass, and I've had this uh, just a week or two now, and I've been playing with it, and I have a pretty good idea how it works, and I have been comparing the functions of the two, and uh, both of them actually point very remarkably close to each other. So I think that uh, for just general direction finding, both of them would be good. Both of them would be more than adequate. Now I don't have a handy desert that I can drive around in and actually use these from a practical point of view but I have read about other people using them and how they work, so I've got some ideas about uh, both of these compasses as far as how practical they would be for different functions in the field. The Bagnold Sun Compass, this is approximately actual size, is um, in many ways the better one. You have to pre-calculate the azimuth of the sun for your latitude and longitudes, but beyond that, once that's done, uh, it's very simple. You just uh, it, the real one has a thumb screw so that you can move the entire dial around to keep pace with the movement of the sun. And one of the other advantages that it has is that if you're following a course, for instance, the, uh, we don't have a good shadow here, but you can see the shadow is on the direction finder. If you had to go around an obstruction, the shadow is actually pointing to the direction that you're heading, and then you can plot that on a map when you're figuring out where you where you've gone later on to figure out where you are. Now with the Abrams, you can't do that. If you're going around an obstruction, the shadow doesn't fall on any useful information, I don't believe. This, however, does have an advantage over the Bagnold compass. With the Bagnold compass, as I said, you have to pre-calculate the azimuth of the sun throughout the day for your latitude and longitude. The Abrams, you don't need to worry about that. The Abrams, you just can go by clock time. So, for instance, we'll just say our local time is 11 a.m., okay? But we have daylight savings time in place. So all I have to do is take one hour off for daylight savings time. Now, I'm also about seven and a half degrees, seven degrees from the center of the time zone, so I would subtract 30 minutes from the time for that. And then I have to add back 10 minutes for the equation of time. The equation of time is right on the date bar there, so I would add 10 minutes back for that. And now I'm set, and that's all I have to do. As long as I have accurate watch time, local watch time, I can figure out my local apparent time in just a, a moment or two. I don't need to figure out the azimuth of the sun. One other advantage I think the Bagnold Sun Compass has is that you could make one. I've thrown one together with paper plates and it's reasonably accurate. So in an emergency, you could make one. Uh, obviously, all of, the, all of those, what do they call them, hyperbola lines would be pretty much impossible to replicate in the field in an emergency situation. So this compass is uh, good and accurate, but not something you could easily make yourself. So I would say if all you have is a watch, a map, and a sun compass to navigate with, this would be the one, but it takes more effort to use it actually in the field. If you have a map, a sun compass, and a means of calculating the azimuth of the sun, then this one might be the way to go. It's cer certainly easier to use on the go. Now personally, if I was actually going out in the desert, I would try to get an actual Bagnold sun compass, a real one or a, or a good quality replica, and an Abrams to back up the GPS. At 120 degrees, you don't have to worry about the sun compass failing, but electronics, you know, under the best of circumstances, they can die on you. It's always good to have a, a backup that you know you can rely on. 